Hi, I'm Mercy Dale and welcome to my channel and welcome to Mental Health Thursdays. This week I want to talk about Pride and Prejudice and if you want to know more then keep on watching. First, I just want to mention that all of my Mental Health Thursday videos are based off of my blog and I always try to link it down below so that you can read the blog post that this specific video is based off of or you can read other topics that I do cover there. Today, I want to talk about Pride and Prejudice and I'm not talking about the book or the movie, <laughs> although they do show great examples of what Pride is and what Prejudice is. So if you don't know what that is in uh, terms of behavior, go ahead and read the book or watch the movie. And to be honest, it doesn't really matter which movie you watch is because they all show the same thing in, in my opinion. Darcy is the one with Pride and Elizabeth is the one with Prejudice then you know what to watch out for. for uh, first, let us look into what pride means and what prejudice means. Pride is consciousness of one's own dignity, but it could also be, in a negative setting, pride refers to a foolishly and irrational corrupt sense of one's personal value, which means it's based off of no facts. And prejudice is preconceived opinion that is not based on reason or actual experience, meaning you are basing things off of facts you have not received yet. And in modern terms, prejudice is basically gossip and assumptions. That's what it is. Why do I want to talk about these? And that is because in a negative setting, and for me, prejudice is negative from the beginning, pride is not negative from the beginning. But both of them in a negative setting is going to affect your life negatively. But first, let us look at pride and why it doesn't start off as a negative thing and how it can be a negative thing. Basically, pri taking pride in uh, your accomplishments and how you behave towards others with base facts that you're doing something good, there are facts and evidence of that. Taking pride in something you do or say and anything that you accomplish in life that is great and positive, taking pride in that, that is a positive pride. And usually those occur in small doses, so they don't lead to, well, like the famous saying, pride becomes before a fall. Why does pride come before a fall? And I know not everybody has heard that saying, but I do believe most people have. When you build your pride, it's usually by a, a ladder. But if one of those ladder legs is broken, because there is no foundation, there is no evidence to back up the pride, there is no facts to back up the pride, that leg is going to be broken and the higher and higher you go, the harder you fall. And let's face it, if you are prideful to the point where you do not see reality from fiction, what you have made up in your head, you're basically climbing higher and faster than the ladder can keep with you. And it's gonna eventually give out. But if I were the ladder, I would wait until you're pretty far up so that you can fall really hard and really fast for you to maybe learn from your mistakes. Now, the ladder doesn't have to be a person. Sometimes it happens to be a person that leads to the fall of another person. But in most cases, it's uh, objects and things. It's not a living thing, it's circumstances that leads to the fall because when you are so prideful to the point where you do not even see the reality of what is going on around you and you have to push other people down in order to rise up, which by the way doesn't actually work. Now if you have reached that point of pride, everything around you is going to start working against you which basically means it could be your boss get firing you. It could be a partner breaking up with you because they have had enough with your attitude, which is what comes with pride, by the way. It comes attitude and not the kind of sassy, positive, reinforcing everybody else kind of attitude, but the one that brings everybody else down. It's a negative attitude. And that is going to be a force field around you. Like, I don't know if you've seen those um, sound waves, but you are 
pride and your negativity it's gonna be like those sound waves and it's gonna start knocking things over and you are the one to fa uh, at fault for this because you are the one creating those waves of negative energy and it's gonna start knocking things around you but it's only going to affect you because why people tend to get out of the way and watch you fall because they don't want to be there to help you because why would they you're a mean person who wants to help a mean person and so to avoid pride in the big senses and the falling senses what you have to do is remember that it's okay to be proudful of your achievements in life maybe you have your kids or maybe you're proud of your parents or you're proud of somebody inspirational or maybe you're proud of something in your life it's okay to be proudful of those things but you have to remember that sometimes you had outside help sometimes you need to be proud of the people that helped you as well if somebody helped you and you have to remember that even if you're proud of those things and your accomplishments you have to remember you're not the only one in this world who have accomplished something and that is the thing with people that fall from pride is that they forget that other people are accomplished as well they forget that other people are just as good as them and just remember not to put yourself above another person you're not better they are not better you're both equal even though you're different and do different things and have achieved different things you are both equal so to avoid the pride the negative pride don't put yourself above another person you can be proud of the things you have done you can be proud of your accomplishments but not at the cost of other people and don't ever put yourself above another person prejudice what does that actually how can i explain that in modern terms like i said it's like gossip and assumptions and for those of you who don't know what prejudice is it basically means judging before seeing or knowing everything you need to know but that's basically what it is in modern terms but we have just have a word called prejudice now, why is this negative from the beginning? Well, first of all, you're making assumptions and you're making decisions based on nothing. Absolutely no foundation at all. That's like building a house on sand. When there is no concrete to hold it up, there is nothing to hold it up. It's gonna fall, it's gonna crackle, it's, it's gonna be gone. But the thing is that the assumptions and the gossip, they're all lies. Now, they may turn out to be true, but that's beside the point. You made the assumption, you made the decision without a fact. You never gave another person or another thing benefit of doubt. You never gave them a benefit to explain their side of story or show their side of the story. Now, this does also apply to things not just people because we can see this in kids as well this is not just a learned behavior this is from when we're born you see how kids are picky eaters now some have a foundation for why they're picky eaters they have tasted something and then they realize i don't like it maybe i don't like the consistency maybe i don't like the flavor but those kids that don't want to taste they already made up their mind without a foundation to go on and it's the same with adults in life you make a decision because you see things with your own eyes and with your own understanding and maybe you have facts from 10 years ago that is not relevant for today and you make a decision based off of that you say things based off of that you do things based off of that but that isn't fair to the thing or the person it's not fair it's not even fair to you to be honest but what this kind of behavior does it shows people why they cannot trust you because without anything you're gonna judge them for something they never did or for something they did 10 years ago we see this a lot in the media and that is people that have to apologize again and again and again for the same action they did in the past that doesn't make any sense to me one apology for one action that's enough then we lay it to rest we forget about it we don't have to drag it up every three to five years or make them apologize every single time this gets dragged through the media or dragged through whatever social circle you're running in what they did in the past it's in the past have they for us uh, ask for apology to the relevant people then 
it's none of your business. And I say relevant people because we are nosy people. We like to know everybody's business, but we are not entitled to everybody's business. And so when somebody needs to apologize for something they have done in the past, they only need to apologize to the people affected by what they did. They don't have to apologize to the whole world. They don't have to apologize to you specifically if you were not involved. And if you are prejudiced, you are not involved because you have no base of foundation off of your assumption and ac accusations and your gossip. You're basically making yourself a victim of something you never took a part of. Now that's just in modern terms. Now it probably happened in the past as well, but it happens more frequent now and especially with cancel culture because cancel culture is based off of nothing basically in my opinion. People that are prejudiced tend to live in the past. They always are going to be living in the past and they're not going to look at new information until that information gets old and then they're going to go off of that. I mean, think of it. When you were in high school, I'm going to do high school for this one. Whenever you were there, you heard rumors, right? You heard somebody say this because they saw this. I saw they do, uh, I saw this person doing this. So this is what must be happening, right? But the gossip that gets spread around is based off of another person's eyes. They don't see the whole picture because why would they? They're not a part of the situation. Like imagine if I saw Jenny walking out of a stranger's car. Now, it might be the fact that her uncle drove her to school that day. It might be the fact that her family got a new car and nobody knows about it. It could be a lot of different things, but Jenny got out of, of a different car. Now, if I see this and I'm a prejudiced kind of a person, I'm gonna say, oh, Jenny has a new boyfriend and he's older and they do all of these things because I make everything up in my head. I make this whole story up because I saw Jenny getting out of a car. I didn't recognize. So now I have to make up the whole story saying that, oh, she has a boyfriend and they're sleeping together and he's so much older, he's so mature and they do a lot of freaky kind of things because that's what older guys are into. Now, what did Jenny do? She got out of a car. That's all she did. She went to school. Now, this isn't based off a true story, by the way, but this is how situation starts. Now, I can't keep this information inside of myself. I have to spread it to somebody else. I have to tell them, Jenny has is doing so-and-so with so-and-so. I have to spread this. And this spreads on and spreads on. And it's like the whisper game. I don't re remember if you remember from when you were a child. A kid whispers something in your ear and you have to whisper it to the next kid. And along the way... The whole story, the whole situation gets so distorted. And the only person who suffers from the whole gossip, the whole assumption, the whole judgment is Jenny. And the only thing she's guilty of is getting out of a car. But that is not her life anymore because it's way more exciting to have, I don't know, an older boyfriend who does freaky shit. And that is what prejudice do. You see something with your own eyes and you don't have a foundation or anything to build upon. And if you see something that is wrong, you can confront a person asking, is this what I think it is? And then you can maybe get to answers, but you don't have a right to answers, by the way. Maybe you can get to the bottom of it and say that I saw this and that is my assumption. What you wanna do with it, that is up to you. Now that's how you handle prejudice. You, instead of just going spreading it around to every single person, go to the source and ask what is going on. The thing is, I could have gone off to Jenny and said, I, I don't recognize the car. Like, is everything okay? Or uh, did your family get a new car or something? Not to be nosy, but to make sure she's okay. And she could have said, oh no, my uncle is in town and he drove me to school. Problem solved, gossip averted. Now, Jenny doesn't ha need to give me an explanation but she can if she feels the free to do so. But I don't have the right to go and tell everybody what I saw because it's what she did is not illegal and it's not hurting herself or somebody else. Now, if you see somebody hurting themselves or somebody else, obviously tell somebody that can actually help, but she did nothing of those things. She got out of a car. So instead of spreading the gossip and spreading the prejudice, go to the source and ask, this is what's going around. Is this true or not? Now, they don't, have, they don't need to answer you, but if you really want answers, you can let them know this is going around. And you can also say, I choose to believe it or I choose not to believe it. Then they know where you stand. But you do not have 
the right to spread it, continue spreading it around. And prejudice is quite dangerous because you're taking away the right for a person to defend themselves or speak up for themselves because you already made up your mind. There's nothing that's going to change your mind because you already have the story built up and you have built it on fake bricks and you think the foundation is going to crumble and you are going to crumble, but it's not true. If you did build everything you know on a foundation that has fact, it is, has evidence, it can be backed up, then you know it's a solid foundation and you can go off of that. But if it's just you seeing things with your eyes and your understanding and from your situation in life, it can't be backed up and you shouldn't be talking about it to anybody. Stop hurting people with the words you speak. That's what I want to say. That is all I have for you today. And if you liked the video, leave a like and a comment down below. And if you want more content like this, then hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And you will be notified when I upload a video. And I upload my Mental Health Thursday videos every Thursday at 7 o'clock Norwegian time, which makes it about 2 o'clock New York time. And with that, I want to say thank you so much for watching. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!